Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the sixth annual Interfaith Awareness Week. My name is Reverend Dr. Steve Albert, and I'm the director of the World Interfaith Network. Interfaith Awareness Week is a yearly, week-long celebration begun by the Poway Interfaith team in Poway, California. In 2017, Point, as it's known, has members throughout San Diego County, and we hosted a five-day Name Connect conference in the San Diego area. We held it at the University of California in San Diego, and it attracted over 250 people from 20 different faiths. 77 speakers and presenters provided workshops, lectures, discussions, morning meditations, activities, which included bus trips to historic faith locations, concert in the park, and lots and lots of food. While planning the conference, we contacted the mayors of the cities throughout San Diego County about creating that second week in August during the conference as Interfaith Awareness Week and to do it in their city. And believe it or not, 14 city mayors and the San Diego County Board of Supervisors proclaimed Interfaith Awareness Week as a time in which we honor and respect all faiths, cultures, creeds, and races, and seek to learn from those who believe equal spiritual opportunity and human rights belong to all people. One year later in 2018, the governor of the state of California proclaimed Interfaith Awareness Week as an annual state celebration. And then one year after that, in 2019, the United Religions Initiative asked if they could celebrate the second week in August with us. And their members are located in over 107 countries. Wow, so what we will be celebrating and participating in this coming week will truly be a global celebration. Well, that's the history of Interfaith Awareness Week. Now we need to move forward into this week's activities and introduce you to the over 40 interfaith groups, which will be presenting prayers, music, dance, speaker panels, dialogues, and discussions from their area of the world. I know that you'll enjoy meeting new friends from different faith and cultural backgrounds and appreciate the mutual respect they all have for one another as we unite our interfaith partners globally. And each noontime, Monday through Friday, don't miss the one hour global talk zone. The talk zones is where you can meet and interact with interfaith people from all over the world and introduce the new programs that you're working on. Perhaps you'll learn new practices to help you develop uh, the final product. You may even be invited to collaborate on a virtual event and even be on a panel elsewhere in the world. By joining forces, with interfaith groups throughout the world, your events will become richer and attract more people. Oh, by the way, if you get hungry or need a cup of coffee or something to eat during, between, or after the many sessions, any hour of the day or night, you can visit our virtual Interfaith Awareness Week cafeteria. Whether you want coffee, a snack, a full breakfast, lunch, or dinner, link your computer's browser to the site shown and grab an IAW food tray. Then go back and select what you want to eat and drink, copy them one at a time, and paste them into your tray. Make sure you save the tray for a souvenir. All virtual food is sugar-free, calorie-free, gluten-free, kosher, and halal. So come back anytime during the week 
24 7. So now I'm going to turn the program over to the next presentation. Hello, I'm Judy Lee Troutman, Chair of the Mold of Faith Council of Northwest Ohio. As Chair, I would like to invite you to our contribution to Interfaith Awareness Week. It, it is entitled Learn, Fellowship, Serve, and Worship. It will be in three parts. The first part is a brief story of our formation as a Mold of Faith Council and the accomplishments we've had over the course of about 20 years. Then we will show a very brief video of one of our universal worship services, which we are currently offering during our program year on a monthly basis on Zoom. And then we will have a panel of local faith leaders who will discuss the importance of our work in the community. I hope you enjoy our contribution to Interfaith Awareness Week. The Mold Faith Council of Northwest Ohio was spun off from a parent organization as a standalone nonprofit in 2003. It was founded by the late DeForest Woody Troutman and myself, his wife, Judy Lee Troutman. Our initial activities began in about 2001. The vision of the council is to serve as a model of multi faith collaboration to address critical local issues and to enrich the cultural fabric of the region. Our mission is to draw together the rich local faith diversity in mutual respect, friendship, and cooperative service to Northwest Ohio. We developed our covenant in the workshops that preceded our Habitat for Humanity multi-faith builds. We accomplish our mission through four strands, education, fellowship, shared community service, and universal worship. Our first banquet was before we were spun off from a parent organization. It was at the Hindu temple and broke the fire code for attendance at over 400 people. We have held banquets at a wide variety of local faith sites and now on Zoom for safety during the pandemic. Started as after Habitat Build discussions, our picnics soon became a much larger family event. Our next one is August 21st, 2022 at the Khan Pavilion at the Islamic Center of Northwest Ohio. Education has always been a strong part of our mission and we have fulfilled it with well over 100 sessions. The idea of Interfaith Habitat for Humanity builds started in Toledo with the Holy Toledo build in 2001. Woody wanted to add more faiths. We held pre-build workshops to learn about each other before picking up Hammer. The builds were a very bonding force in our early years. We were part of the Erase the Hate board. We emphasized juried youth contests in video, posters, and poetry. We have had many youth events and festivals. We are working now to increase the diversity of our current youth discussion groups and also to develop more family-friendly events. When Habitat Builds became too expensive to continue, we started a study of the environment as approached by various faiths. This led to strong support for faith-based community gardens. Now we are supporters of the Sacred Grounds program, which fosters native plants and rain gardens on faith grounds. 
Toledo was part of a very successful pilot program. Our next big initiative was to become designated as a compassionate community, the first region. We were certified in 2014 with signing at Government Center, a compassion networking convention with about 90 organizations doing compassionate work in our area. The weekend concluded with a designation banquet where we were welcomed by a representative from Compassionate Louisville. We started recognizing Heroes of Compassion, the largely untold stories of individuals and organizations doing extraordinary compassionate work. The names are engraved on a plaque that resides in the County Commissioner's Office. We now have over 57 heroes. We have participated in the Global Compassion Games since 2014. We document the number of volunteers, the number of volunteer hours, number of people served and dollars raised. We have been global winners each year, but really, everyone wins. A grant from Compassion Games International has enabled us to sponsor MLK Unity local celebrations and also area service projects. We celebrated the fifth anniversary as a compassionate community with a mini area parliament of the Northwest Ohio religions. We hosted nine events in five days, luncheon faith site visits, evening forums, and a sacred music concert which was held at Lourdes Franciscan Theater and recorded on Buckeye Cable. Our next diverse multi-faith concert will be November 7th, 2022 at Warren AME Church. We co-sponsor this collaborative effort to try to avoid being such a throwaway society. It has had good success. The pandemic hampered the in-person event for a while, but it now is meeting monthly again. We have celebrated World Interfaith Harmony Week, February 1st through 7th, for nine years with clergy faith leader breakfasts. It is our only event to specifically invite clergy and faith leaders. We are mostly a lay-led nonprofit. The pandemic has moved our celebration to Zoom. This year, we try to honor the extra pressures on faith leaders during the ongoing pandemic. We had a gift for every attendee, resources for congregants, small group discussions about self-care and congregant care, and a drawing for door prizes. We have kept very busy during the pandemic. For over a year, I shared with area faith leaders Lucas County Health Department status reports, first daily, then weekly. On a monthly basis, we market community events that are open to all faiths. Our admin assistant, Crystal Taylor, offered free Zoom training. We have held over 60 events online to keep us safe yet connected. The Multifaith Events Group has for over 11 years been meeting monthly at various community locations. Discussions center around how members respond to life situations from diverse respective faiths. There are also occasional book discussions and quarterly meals at St. Paul's Community Center and often participation at Salem Lutheran Church meals. The women also have discussions, but also art demonstrations, cooking demonstrations, various service projects, field trips, and a Together Women Rise chapter. Our universal worship services have been both spiritual and educational. Instead of someone telling us we have common ground, we are learning about each other on an experiential and spiritual level. It has created a multi-faith family. Our universal worship services are unique because we are such a diverse community that we have authentic representatives of seven to nine faith traditions
participating with sacred readings and music or poetry. The Woody Troutman Multifaith Lecture this year had a panel about our upcoming So All May Eat Cafe to be housed in the downtown Toledo Lucas County Public Library. Guests may pay for chef prepared nutritious meals in one of three ways, by cash, by volunteer time, or by donated produce. The concept was created in Denver. Their board has generously supported our local effort because it is really a good fit for Compassionate Toledo. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation of the beginnings and the work of the Mold Faith Council of Northwest Ohio. If you would like to learn more, you can consult our website or our Facebook pages. You may also email us with questions. These are a few examples of the Lola Faith Council of Northwest Ohio Universal Worship Services as adapted from Hazrat Inayat Khan's service. The Lola Faith Council has long celebrated the International Day of Peace, September 21st. We have celebrated by planting local peace poles and by services of universal worship. Today is the United Nations International Day of Peace. In this 75th year of existence for the UN, the International Day of Peace was established in 1981 by the United Nations General Assembly. Two decades later, in 2001, the General Assembly unanimously voted to designate the day as a period of nonviolence and ceasefire. We are observing this auspicious day with the Multifaith Council of Northwest Ohio's monthly universal worship service, followed by the second of a two-day dedication of our new Peace Poll. May Peace Prevail on Earth International was founded in Japan more than 50 years ago, and today it is based at the World Peace Sanctuary in upstate New York. The universal message for world peace May Peace Prevail on Earth was authored in 1955 by the late Masahisa Goi of Japan. In a moment of great inspiration, Masahisa Goi awakened to the need to spread this message in the hearts of the global community for the attainment of inner and outer peace. The idea of planting peace poles with the words May Peace Prevail on Earth gained momentum in the 70s and 80s. Now there are more than 250,000 peace poles around the world and quite a few in our local community. We are observing the 2020 International Day of Peace with the Multifaith Council of Northwest Ohio's monthly universal worship service with the appropriate theme, May All Have Peace, followed by the second of a two-day dedication of our newest local peace poll. A video of the first dedication day as part of the First Unitarian Church of Toledo's peace service yesterday has been shared to the Multifaith Council of Northwest Ohio Facebook page or you can view their entire service on the Toledo Unitarians YouTube channel. May peace prevail on earth. And now we will begin the service with the invocation.
towards the one, the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the only being united with all the illuminated souls who form the embodiment of the Master, the Spirit of Guidance. We have lit candles to represent these faith traditions, the pagan traditions, the Hindu faith, the Jewish religion, the Buddhist tradition, the Christian religion, the religion of Islam, the Baha'i faith, Unitarian Universalism. We also kindle the light symbolically representing all those who, whether known or unknown to the world, have held aloft the light of truth amidst the darkness of human ignorance. Let us pray. Pour upon us thy love and thy light. Draw us closer to thee every moment of our life until in us be reflected thy grace, thy glory, thy wisdom, thy joy, and thy peace. Amen. We will now hear Patricia DeSandro, known as Bonadea Leoness, Elder Wise Woman and Elder Wiccan High Priestess, to speak from the pagan traditions. This is the transformation to peace ritual. Peace comes when one is willing to turn over judgment and justice to a power greater than ourselves. And at that moment of release, peace grows and begs to be shared. And this is the peace chant. In my soul peace grows, and from my heart it flows. Out into the land, and back to me again. In my soul peace grows, and from my heart it flows. Like a calming tide, from source to soul worldwide. Thank you. Now I will sing a song called The Spirit of the Plants. The spirit of the plants has come to me in the form of a beautiful dancing green woman. The spirit of the plants has come to me in the form of a beautiful dancing green woman. Her eyes fill me with peace. Her dance filled me with peace. Her eyes filled me with peace. Her dance filled me with peace. The spirit of the plants has come to me in the form of a beautiful dancing green woman. The spirit of the plants has come to me in the form of a beautiful dancing green woman. The spirit of the plants has come to me and has blessed me with great Peace. The spirit of the plants has come to me and has blessed me with great peace. The spirit of the plants has come to me in the form of a beautiful dancing green woman. The spirit of the plants has come to me in the form of a beautiful 
dancing green woman. And now Dipti Vyas from the Hindu Temple of Toledo will speak to us read, reading from the Hindu tradition. When you examine the core teachings of Hinduism, it is possible to demonstrate the way Hinduism guides individuals in accomplishing global peace through attainment of inner peace. A Vedic prayer from the Yajur Veda goes something like this. May there be peace in the heavens, peace in the atmosphere, peace on earth. Let there be coolness and water healing in the herbs, and peace radiating from trees. Let there be harmony in the planets and in the stars, and perfection in eternal knowledge. May everything in the universe be at peace. Let peace pervade everywhere at all times. May I experience that peace with my own heart. Thank you. And now, Vani Chururu from the Hindu temple will sing Shanti Nilava Vendam. I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. So for today's theme, the song is Shanti Nilava Vendum, written in Indian language Tamil, set to Ragam Tilang and Aditalam, composer is Seth Madhavarao. Concept is peace should prevail in this world and the strength of the soul should increase. We are practitioners of non-violence, which gives strength, and to correct the mind that did evil, we would teach them good character. We would cut away foolishness and fear and nurture the good stainless character of people. Shanti nilava vendum Yengum shanti nilava vendum Atma sekti bonga vendum Ulagile shanti nilava vendum Ulagile shanti nilava vendum Gandhi Mahatma Katilayadu Gandhi Mahatma Katilaya Dubi Karuni Botrumai Kadiroli Perevi Karuni Botrumai Kadiroli Perevi Shanti Nilava Vendum Atma Sekti Wonga Vendum Ulagile Shanti Nilava Kodume say ti or Manamadritirunda Narguna madai puha tido boom. Kodume say ti or Manamadritirunda Narguna madai puha tido boom. Made my achum arupom Makalyam asila na lodukum Valarpom Made my achum arupom Makalyam asila na lodukum Valarpom Didam tarumayasa Yogi Didam Tarumayasa Yogi Nantande Atmananda Perevi Atmananda Perevi Kadamai Marabom Our Kadasir Pom Kalanga Miller Umbalder Pom Kadamai Marabom our good as ear poem, Kalanga Miller and Valer poem, Yangum Shanti Nilava Vendum Atma Shakti Wonga Vendum, Ulegile Shanti, Ulegile Shanti Nilava Vendum.
And now we will hear from Devorah Shulamit, who will speak from the Jewish tradition. And she is in charge of interfaith programming and a member of the Jewish community. Good evening. Judaism teaches that God's very name is peace. And thus the pursuit of peace itself is the very sanctification of his name, in which our tradition declares to be the very purpose of our existence. The Hebrew word for peace, shalom, comes from a root meaning completeness and perfection. Judaism's religious texts overwhelmingly endorse compassion and peace. And the Hebrew Bible contains the well-known commandment to love thy neighbor as thyself. On every Shabbat Friday evening, Jewish parents pronounce over their children and in congregations on significant occasions, Shalom Aleichem, the blessings of Aaron, the high priest and brother of our teacher Moses, which originates in about 1400 BCE. Jewish concept also recognizes that true peace is part of a totalium, which includes justice and compassion, reflected in the idea of to come alum, repair the world, social justice, freedom, equality, peace, and the restoration of the environment. It is a call to action. I would be remiss if I didn't say a word about RBG. Her demise is a great loss for our country and for me personally. Like her, I am a woman, Jew, and mother. She was a champion for equality for all humanity. She walked the talk and valiantly fought. Rest in peace, RBG. Shalom. Thank you, Devorah. And now, um, Hila Zamir will play on the clarinet Shir La Shalom, A Song for Peace. It's a famous Israeli song that expresses a yearning for peace. Hello and good evening. And thank you so much for the opportunity to play uh, great music for you guys. So this song, uh, Shir La Shalom, is composed by Yair Rosenblum and I will be playing it for you on the, on my clarinet. So enjoy.
Thank you. Thank you, Hila, that was beautiful. And now we will hear Michael B. McGinnis from the Buddhist Temple of Toledo, who will be doing the reading for Buddhism and also the chant. Go ahead and unmute, Michael. War and peace begin in the hearts of individuals. War begins when we harden our hearts and we harden them easily in minor ways and then quite serious major ways such as hatred and prejudice whenever we feel uncomfortable. It's so sad really because our motivation in hardening our hearts is to find some kind of ease, some kind of freedom from the distress that we're feeling. We can talk about ending war and we can march for ending war. We can do everything in our power, but war is never going to end as long as our hearts are hardened against each other. What I'm advocating for is something that requires courage, the courage to have a change of heart. Pema Chitron, practicing peace in times of war. And from the Dhammapada chapter one, verse five, in this world, hate never yet dispelled hate, only love dispels hate. This is the law, ancient and ex inexhaustible. This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful not proud and demanding in nature let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove wishing in gladness and in safety may all beings be at ease whatever living beings there may be whether they are weak or strong omitting none the great or mighty medium short or tall the seen and unseen those living near and far away those born and to be born, may all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or will will wish harm upon another, even as a mother protects with her life, her child, her only child. So with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upward to the skies and downward to the depths, outward and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain the recollection. This is said to be the supreme abiding by not holding two fixed views, the pure hearty hearted one having clarity of vision, being freed from all sense desires, is not born into this world again. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And now reading from Christianity, the Reverend Lanny Sipes, who is associate pastor of Christ Presbyterian Church and also a member of the board of directors of the Multi Faith Council of Northwest Ohio. Hi, so glad to be with you all tonight. Jesus greets us with the word peace and the words do not be afraid throughout the Bible. So here now these words of Jesus found in the Gospel of John chapter 14 verses 25 through 27. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything 
and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Thank you, Lenny. And now, um, Joanna, the Reverend Dr. Joanna Gabriel from a retired Unity minister will sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth, adapted from songwriters Jill Jackson and Cy Miller. Greetings, everyone. At this extraordinary time of pandemics, we all long for peace. This song reminds us that peace begins within our hearts. Let, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as creator, family all are we. Let me walk with my family in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now with Every step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin and let it begin with me thank you Thank you, Joanna. And now, um, Imam Farouk Abu El Sahab from the Islamic Society of Northwest Ohio will be reading for Islam. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. And uh, already I wrote some verses in the hadith of the Quran. But later on, I came up with my own thoughts about the subject. May all have peace when justice is served to the poor and the rich to the big nations and the minorities, and no one or nation will be above the law. May all have peace when we know that we are brothers and sisters and treat others the same way we want to be treated. We may all have peace when we have kind-hearted and humble leaders to respect other countries' sovereignty and, dictate and not dictators and the hate advocates. We may all have peace We may all have peace when we as people, as nations, as leaders, stop oppressing each other. We may all have peace 
we will give the children of the world food, books, and teachers, not starvation, bonds, and soldiers. We may all have this when we, as people, when we have all religions, all ethnicities, all colors, categories are respected. May peace prevail on earth to all mankind. Thank you. Thank you, Imam Farouk, for those words. For a poetic reading for Islam, I'm going to read just a brief poem of Hafiz. There is so much in our daily talk that is disturbing and brings worry and distress. So I thought I would share this, this really short quote by Hafiz, who was a 14th century Persian poet. For a day, just for one day, talk about that which disturbs no one and bring some peace into your beautiful eyes by Hafiz. Now, Jennifer Hill of the Sylvania Baha'is will be reading and singing for the Baha'i tradition. I chose two selections from Baha'i writings on how we can promote world peace. So Shoghi Effendi said, the primary question to be resolved is how the present world with its entrenched pattern of conflict can change to a world in which harmony and cooperation will prevail. World order can be founded only on an unshakable consciousness of the oneness of mankind, a spiritual truth which all the human sciences confirm. Recognition of this truth requires abandonment of prejudice, prejudice of every kind, race, class, color, creed, nation, sex, degree of material civilization, everything which enables people to consider themselves superior to others. In the Baha'i view, recognition of the oneness of mankind calls for no less than the reconstruction and the demilitarization of the whole civilized world. The Universal House of Justice has said, this spirit of solidarity has continued to spread over the decades, and today its effect is apparent in a range of developments, from the rejection of deeply ingrained racial prejudices to the dawning consciousness of world citizenship, from heightened environmental awareness to collaborative efforts in the promotion of public health, from the concern for human rights to the systematic pursuit of universal education, from the establishment of interfaith activities to the efflorescence of hundreds of thousands of local, national, and international organizations engaged in some form of social action. So I've chosen saying Peace is Light by um, Nassim Mani um, on the topic of peace. Peace is light, where war is darkness. Peace is light, where war is death. Thoughts of peace tell of love, brotherhood and happiness. Happiness. Concentrate all the thoughts of your heart. Peace is light, where war 
that abode it dwelleth. For love is light. Love is light. No matter in what abode it dwelleth. Beautiful. Jennifer, that really was beautiful. Now for Unitarian Universalism, the Reverend Dr. T.K. Barger from First Unitarian Church of Toledo will read. Hello, I would like to point out that the Peace Poll that is being dedicated yesterday and today donated to the Multi-Faith Council of Northwest Ohio and First Unitarian Church of Toledo by Judy Troutman is with me right here today in the sanctuary of First Unitarian, and we intend to plant the poll on our grounds later this week. My reading is by the Reverend Rosemary Gray McNatt, who today is the president of Star King School for the Ministry. The truth is this, if there is no justice, there will be no peace. We can read Thoreau and Emerson to one another, quote Rilke and Alice Walker and Howard Thurman, and think good and noble thoughts about ourselves. But if we cannot bring justice into the small circle of our own individual lives, we cannot hope to bring justice to the world. And if we do not bring justice to the world, None of us is safe and none of us will survive. Nothing that Unitarian Universalists need to do is more important than making justice real. Here, where we are, hard as diversity is, it is our most important task. Yes. Thank you, T.K. Um, I will be singing I've Got Peace Like a River, words by Marvin V. Frey. It's number 100 in the singing living tradition of the, unit of the Universal, Unitarian Universalist Association. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got love. Like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I think one of our first Peace Day celebrations, it was certainly the first peace poll we planted together. Um, Melissa Jeter sang that with me. Um, so it's sort of fitting since she's a Unitarian Universalist uh, commissioned lay minister and she's in seminary now to become a full minister. So let us pray. This is a selection from Salat. May the message of God reach far and wide, illuminating 
and making the whole humanity as one single family in the parenthood of God. Amen. And now words from um, Hazrat Anayat Khan who wrote this service in 1921, way ahead of his time. But we certainly need the, the idea of peace and unity that he was trying to propose. Send thy peace, O Lord, which is perfect and everlasting, that our souls may radiate peace. Send thy peace, O Lord, that we may think, act, and speak harmoniously. Send thy peace, O Lord, that we may be comforted and thankful for thy bountiful gifts. Send thy peace, O Lord, that amidst our worldly strife, we may enjoy thy bliss. Send thy peace, O Lord, that we may endure all, tolerate all in the thought of thy grace and mercy. Amen. And I'll sing a, a, a song version of those same thoughts that I learned in a Sufi camp in Mexico. Send us the peace of thy divine spirit and unite us all in thy perfect peace. Send us the peace of thy divine spirit and unite us all in thy perfect peace. And then I'd like to invite you to just a few moments of perhaps the best kind of prayer silent prayer because in silence we may hear a voice and in silence we may pray in each our own tradition so shall we pray Shalom, Shanti, may it be so, Ashe. And let us further pray, give us thy great goodness, teach us thy loving forgiveness, raise us above the distinctions and differences which divide us. Send us the peace of thy divine spirit and unite us all in thy perfect being. Amen. May the blessings of God rest upon you. May his peace abide with you. And may his presence illuminate your hearts now and forevermore. This is universal worship and we'll now add just a short piece to this special universal worship, which is a continuation of the dedication of the Peace Pole. One of my favorite Sufi quotes by Hazrat Anayat Khan is about peace. I will transliterate it for more gender inclusive language. We must first create peace in ourselves if we desire to see peace in the world. For lacking peace within, none of our efforts can bring any result. The main mission of the Multifaith Council is one of local peace building. The covenant of the Multifaith Council is, I vow to consciously grow in the understanding and compassion that will encourage me to live peaceably with all of my neighbors. 
We are blessed to live in a richly diverse community. My late husband, Woody Troutman, saw that we were not always inclusive of that diversity. Even interfaith organizations were not truly diverse in their faith representation. As a retired professional engineer, he wanted to fix that. So he dreamed of an organization that would welcome all faiths and none. He dreamed that we would mingle and chat together to replace fear of the unknown with res mutual respect. He dreamed of celebrating differences while finding common ground. He dreamed that we would fellowship together and work together in engaged community service. I met him in 2002 and I offered to help, which meant that Woody had me on every committee whether they wanted me or not. On January 1st, 2003, we co-founded the Multifaith Council of Northwest Ohio. In March of that year, we were married in First Unitarian Church when it was on Collingwood Boulevard in a multi-faith wedding with eight faiths represented in the ceremony. That same year, we started the first of our six Habitat for Humanity multi-faith builds. We held our second of 18 annual banquets. We held some of the now over 100 educational programs. We held the first of our many multi-faith picnics and several other small social events. When Woody died a little over four years ago, his last words to the council and to the community were, push on, and we do. Looking back over the 17 plus years that the Multifaith Council has been a central part of my life, I realized we did not build just an organization. We built a multifaith family. And this family of universal worship is certainly an example of that. One of the most significant initiatives of MSC is the official designation of Greater Toledo Compassionate Community, the first region in the Compassionate City Movement, which now has over 200 ongoing initiatives in almost 50 countries. We have played the Compassion Games, a co-opetition in which cities document compassionate activity between 9-11 and 9-21, the International Day of Peace. We have always ranked one or two in at least one of the categories. Last year, we were tops in the world, but everybody wins. We have held many Peace Day celebrations. During several of them, we have honored an existing peace pole or planted one co-sponsored by MFC. We have planted peace poles at the University Church, the Hindu Temple, and congregation than I Israel. We carried a portable peace pole borrowed from the local chapter of the Association of United States Catholic Priests to all nine events of our November Parliament of the Northwest Ohio Religions. This year I decided to fulfill a long dream and gift a peace pole to the Multifaith Council and First Unitarian Church of Toledo. The poll has the words, May Peace Prevail on Earth, in English, Arabic, Lakota, Hebrew, Hindi, French, Hawaiian, and Spanish. There is a dedication plaque inscribed in memory of Woody Troutman, 1920 to 2016. You see on the screen share of the poll when I received it, in my living room, but it'll be seen by more people at First Unitarian Church than it would at my house. Later this week, the church grounds crew will plant the peace pole on the church grounds where we can all enjoy it and we can meditate on our piece of peace. We each have a P-I-E-C-E -E of P-E-A-C-E -E and if we add our piece of peace, 
we may be able to help make it a reality in our lives and in our community. And so we dedicate this poll to the Mobile Faith Council, to First Unitarian Church of Toledo, and to the whole community as a symbol of peace. May peace prevail on earth. Amen. This concludes our dedication and our service. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you get to see the Peace Pole in its, in its place at First Unitarian Church sometime and meditate about your piece of peace. Thank you. Good night. I'm adding a very brief introductory segment of the Universal Worship Service April 4th, 2022, on the theme of nature, because nature is a very important subject for the Mulda Faith Council of Northwest Ohio. Also, Lorraine Carpenter, who has been our music director for Universal Worship, is now also a, an ordained Shirag, and I wanted to show how she now introduces our services. She is also playing a, a piece that she composed on the native flute. Our theme for this service is nature. When we face a health crisis, we realize our own vulnerability. Will the climate crisis make us realize our planet home's vulnerability? Robin Wall Kimmerer in Braiding Sweetgrass said, when Sky Woman arrived, she didn't come alone. She was pregnant. Knowing her grandchildren would inherit the world she left behind, she didn't work for flourishing in her time only. It was through her actions of reciprocity, the give and take with the land, that the original immigrant, that's Sky Woman, became indigenous. For all of us, becoming indigenous to a place means living as if your children's future mattered to take care of the land as if our lives, both material and spiritual, depended on it. So we now begin this service with nine faith traditions presenting readings and music or poetry on the theme of nature from their writings and music. The invocation towards the one, the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the only being united with all the illuminated souls who form the embodiment of the master, the spirit of guidance. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light, symbolically representing the Native American tradition. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light, symbolically representing the pagan traditions. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light. symbolically representing the Hindu faith. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light. Symbolically representing the Jewish religion. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light. Symbolically representing the Buddhist tradition. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light. Symbolically representing the Christian religion. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light. Symbolically representing the, the Islam, the relig religion of Islam. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light. 
symbolically representing the Baha'i faith. To the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light. Symbolically representing Unitarian Universalism. And to the glory of the omnipresent God, we kindle the light. Symbolically representing all those who, whether known or unknown to the world, have held aloft the light of truth amidst the darkness of human ignorance. Let us pray. This is an abbreviated form of the prayer psalm. Pour upon us thy love and thy light. Give sustenance to our bodies, hearts, and souls. Use us for the purpose that thy wisdom chooseth, and guide us on the path of thine own goodness. Draw us closer to thee every moment of our life, until in us be reflected thy grace, thy glory, thy wisdom, thy joy, and thy peace. Amen. And now Lorraine Carpenter will do a reading and um, music from the Native American tradition. I'm going to read a few sentences from Robin Wall Kimmer's book, Braiding Sweetgrass, and her book combines scientific knowledge and uh, indigenous wisdom. And she wrote, know the ways of the ones who take care of you so that you may take care of them. Introduce yourself, be accountable as the one who comes asking for life, ask permission before taking, abide by the answer. Never take the first, never take the last, take only what you need, take only that which is given. Never take more than half, leave some for others. Harvest in a way that minimizes harm. Use it respectfully, never waste what you have taken, share. Give thanks for what you have been given. Give a gift in reciprocity for what you have taken. Sustain the ones who sustain you and the earth will last forever. I wrote a short tune for Native American flute called The Earth is in Our Hands. Thank you for all of the attendance that you have offered to this meeting. I, I can't repeat enough how much the Multi Faith Council and especially Universal Worship as one of our programs have created a multi faith family that has been always very valuable, but during a global pandemic when we've been so um, interrupted in our human exchanges and had to go to virtual presence together, um, it's become even more meaningful. Um, 
and I, I can't thank our local multi-faith family nearly enough for the support they've offered me and the rest of the community. Um, I, I need to give some special thanks and recognition to Crystal Taylor, who's our ad administrative assistant and, and our tech superwoman. She has so gracefully helped us trans this to um, a virtual presence. And she's, she's been so helpful in allowing us to not only survive, but thrive. And I also want to thank the board of the Multifaith Council of Northwest Ohio because they've they've stuck with us. We we even meet during the summer now. We used to take a little time off, but boy, we just keep running. And I'm so grateful for all of that support and the support of the local faith communities who have also supported us financially and otherwise. And that's very, very valuable. We're now going to have a brief segment uh, allowing you to have a little bit of a break before your next uh, workshop. But um, I, I've invited some of the faith leaders who have consistently uh, contributed to our universal worship services to give just a few words of what it personally means to them and what the Multifaith Council has meant to them. I do want to recognize um, uh, T.K. Barger, who, who has attended this session, um, he's faithfully uh, represented Unitarian Universalism in our universal worship services uh, right up until the time he had a stem cell transplant. And we're so, so grateful that he's, well, he's growing his hair back, not as much as he used to have, but he seems to be on the path to health. And we're so grateful for that. And we're glad that he was able to give time to be present today. And so now I'd like to introduce um, the faith leaders who are going to just say a few words to us about their personal connection to multi-faith council and universal worship. Um, and so they're pr present here. Um, Joe Zielinski, who is our uh, current vice chair and treasurer and keeps, keeps us honest financially as well as uh, with his leadership. Um, Kathy Carnes, who represents our local pagan community and has participated a lot in, in our universal worship services. And Dipti Vias from the Hindu Temple of Toledo, who is not only uh, a faithful representative of the Hindu religion, but she's on our board of directors. And um, very supportive. Um, Winifred Shokai Martin, who represents the Buddhist Temple of Toledo and is almost always our participant in universal worship. And she's also been ordained a priest of the temple. So um, we're, we're blessed in many ways. Um, and Lorraine Carpenter, who's been my right arm as she co-leads universal worship as both um, a, an amazing musician and as um, a, also an ordained shirag. So we're, we're blessed to have two of us. Um, so uh, um, uh, we'll start with a few words from Joe Zielinski who will speak as um, uh, an executive officer of the Board of Multifaith Council. Joe? You need to unmute. I, I've had it <laughs> muted so long I forgot it was turned off. Uh, so um, I, I would just like to say that um, one of the things that I've found about the Universal Worship Program is that uh, it's, it, it's a profound experiential uh, piece of, of uh, recognizing um, key thoughts from each of the represented, uh, represented uh, faith traditions. And um, the, like, like the uh, program yesterday morning on the golden rule and the similarity between those thoughts in different traditions, uh, when the universal worship team picks 
a series of themes for the year. And then each participant then selects a few thoughts in a relatively short period of time um, representing their faith tradition on, on that particular topic. Uh, when you pay attention to the, to, the, to the service, you see how much similarity there is, not just on one topic, but on many, many topics um, throughout the year. And I think that has really created a real awareness for me of the consistency that underlies a lot of faith traditions in spite of all the, 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 the divisive language that may appear in the, in the world outside. The Universal Worship Program brings us all together uh, in a very unique and wonderful way. And so it's, it's very foundational. My other, my other strong um, uh, activity that I participated in for a number of years is our men's group. And we have, we have the same kind of thing uh, in the men's group, uh, just a little segue off of that, <clears throat> that uh, each, each month uh, the host uh, gets to choose a topic. And uh, it, you know, it's, it's something that might be a, either topical or, or of interest to them. And then each one of us uh, talks about our, our reflections on that topic uh, from the context of our, our, uh, our faith and, and our uh, spiritual uh, resonance with whatever that topic is. And that, that really has created quite a little brotherhood uh, amongst the men in the men's group. So I'm, I could take over the whole meeting and I don't want to do that. So we know you could, Joe, but we're glad that you're restraining yourself. Um, thank you for your comments and, and particularly for mentioning the men's group because the men's and women's group have become a really pillars of our organization. So much appreciated. Next, we'll hear from Kathy Carnes, who uh, has faithfully helped us represent pagan traditions in our universal worship. Hello. I also want to thank Crystal. She truly is a wonder woman <laughs> and uh, is integral to the success of the services. Thank you, Crystal. Thanks, um, everybody. I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, the way the pagan community became um, involved in the services was totally due to Judy's um, uh, gentle prodding um, to get us involved. Um, I'd been a friend of Judy's for quite a while. And um, when she brought up um, the question of would we want to um, participate, um, I had to think about it for a, a few minutes. But um, once we started participating, uh, we realized how important this was for us to um, get understanding uh, of the different pagan paths out to um, um, out to the community. Um, so we, it took a while to um, get a few more people involved. We're still continuing to um, uh, talk to people within the paths, the different paths, the many different paths of paganism to um, get involved and uh, just to continue to um, be available to um, answer questions. And I love, um, I love being able to uh, learn more about all the other, all the other faiths. Um, and it just uh, amazes me at the number of faiths that we're representing now. And I also have been continually amazed um, about the flow, the continuity 
the, the seamless intertwining that seems to happen each month with whatever topic we're, we're, we're talking about that month. Um, each speaker from each faith has something different to add that, that completely meshes. So um, yes, we're, we're, when it comes down to it, we are all, uh, we're all connected. And uh, I was honored to be part of and present for the dedication of the peace pool at the Hin that was done at the Hindu temple. That was, um, it was very moving for me at the time. So um, thank you, Judy, for, for continuing to prod me <laughs> to, um, to get more people to participate in this. It's been a blessing. Thank you, Kathy. Um, and, and thanks to your community for, for being a part of us. We appreciate it. Now, um, Dipti Vyas from the Hindu temple will speak next. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to just express my thoughts uh, on the importance of the Multi-Faith Council to me personally. Um, I mean, again, I will echo the other speakers' thoughts on how the Universal Prayer Service um, is uh, an enlightening factor in pointing out the, the uh, fundamental unity in the thoughts that are expressed in all the faiths uh, that are practiced. Um, uh, and it gives us all an opportunity uh, to sort of um, um, learn about the other faith traditions, uh, you know, get a more in-depth knowledge each month when a, a different topic is, is taken up at the Universal Prayer Service. Um, we realize uh, when I attend the service, I realize I should say that um, how it's, we are all expressing the same thoughts and feelings, but in different words, how each faith is um, uh, basically saying the same message, is conveying the same message using different words because we all have lived in different parts of the world and our thoughts have been influenced by our environment. And like going back to the importance of not just the universal prayer, but uh, what the Multi-Faith Council of Greater Toledo has done is, um, you know, I have realized by all the different activities that the Multi-Faith Council of Greater Toledo takes on as to how much they are trying to contribute to the uh, to bringing together the, the, the Toledo community and how much we are trying to um, sort of like foster the feeling of unity amongst the people of different faiths uh, rather than uh, dividing. And coming from India, you know, I have seen, uh, you know, the, the violence, uh, the, the, <laughs> sectarian violence is, ha, has been so prevalent in India for all of my life that I spent there. Um, and coming here, um, again, India is also, that ha, has all the faiths that you can think of are being practiced openly in India. And at the same time, we are constantly um, experiencing the sectarian violence. When I arrived in the US, I felt like, ah, again, and this is another country that is fostering the same freedoms um, that I had experienced growing up about practicing different faiths. And, and then 9-11 happened and we all know what has happened since then. We are all leaning more towards um, 
division sort of like we are the, the, the uh, I shouldn't say we, but <laughs> uh, the politicians are sort of um, like fostering the thoughts about how different we are rather than focusing on how same, how similar we are, how all the faith traditions are preaching the message of love and unity. And uh, I would say I take my hat off to Judy and Woody Troutman because they were the pioneers of establishing the multi-faith uh, group in Toledo. And uh, it's been just an honor and a privilege to be part of this um, this wonderful organization. I can't say enough about how blessed I am to be um, a part of Toledo, uh, a community, the, the multi-faith community. We are just blessed to be the compassionate community in, in, in this um, day and time. So, so thank you, Judy. Thank you, Crystal. And thank you, multi-faith community of Greater Toledo. Thank you, Nipti, you're gonna make me cry. Uh, but, but thank you because you're such a big part of it too. Uh, so, so much appreciate your, your additions to the community and to our board and um, thank you. Um, Shokai um, Winifred Mar Martin uh, is representing um, the Buddhist temple of Toledo and she has a few words for us. So I really want to echo what everyone has said before, particularly what Dipti said about, um, I was also raised in a society um, where sectarian violence was common. Uh, the troubles in Northern Ireland were in full force uh, when I was an adolescent. Um, and that was Christian killing Christian, not even talking about uh, the wider uh, faith communities. Um, so I do want to express deep gratitude to Judy, to Crystal, to everyone who fosters this uh, capacity for greater understanding. Honestly, growing up in Ireland, I had no idea what a Protestant was or what they believed. There was no opportunity um, to have this heart-to-heart -heart experiential, as Joe said, experiential um, contact with other faiths. So I'm deeply, deeply grateful. Um, and of course, the temple, to speak of the temple in Toledo, we have been involved in various multi-faith community efforts over the years, but it wasn't until we were invited to be part of uh, a monthly commitment um, to, in universal worship that I feel it really integrated um, this into our, uh, into our thought, into um, our experience in the community. Um, and I would echo what other people have said, that each month we discuss a specific theme, peace, social justice, grief, nature, and we all see the commonalities coming out through these ancient wisdom traditions. And, and that, I think, enables us to see the commonalities that underlie all of this, um, not just these specific themes um, that we're speaking from the heart of our humanity, uh, from our experience. And how amazing that we can speak from these ancient traditions, some of which are thousands of years old, and still we're expressing the same truth in 21st century Toledo in the circumstances of our lives. So that is really um, a deep lesson <laughs> for all of us, I think. Um, and I would speak to um, that this tangible expression of intention for understanding is, is really important. Just being in the same space, uh, whether it's virtual or physical, uh, sharing words, music, food, fellowship, um, just to take joy in each other's joy, as we say in our tradition, in our joy of this realization and expression of our deep humanity is, is such an opportunity. Um, um, Pre-COVID, the temple hosted one service of universal worship before we shut down. And that was an amazing evening where we packed more people into our temple than I believe we ever had before and probably exceeded the fire code in doing so. And, um, you know, people still talk about uh, the impact that had on our community uh, to actually sit, just to sit together and listen um, to these expressions for a couple of hours and to share cookies afterwards. It was, it was quite remarkable. 
Um, and then when we opened our new temple uh, this year, uh, Judy and Lorraine and various people from the community came and sat with our teachers and our teachers' teachers representing this 2,600-year-old tradition. And it was just natural. It was just the way it should be. Um, and, um, and deep gratitude to, to everybody who, who came to that and wished us well. Um, and um, just to echo that, there's something um, so valuable in showing up in that way, so valuable in participation. There's value, of course, in understanding cognitively what other traditions are saying, um, you know, through books or study or however. But there is something, of course, in Zen, we're all about experience, direct experience. There's something about feet on the ground, um, sitting in the same room and experiencing this heart to heart communication. So deep as to everyone. Thank you. Um, I, I so appreciate what you had to say um, and, and appreciate your presence among us. Um, and the last panel member is Lorraine Carpenter, um, who, who can speak also of how unique our universal worship services are. So Lorraine. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Crystal. And thank you, everyone. Um, I have experienced and participated in universal worship services in Ohio, New York, Florida, Canada, and Switzerland. Um, and it was actually in Switzerland, I was there, that I decided to become a Chirag. And I'd like to just thank Judy for all her help in helping me on that path. Um, Toledo is very unique. Um, all of these other universal services, worship services were, were great, but Toledo really is authentic. It has such a diverse community and everyone is willing to step up and, and show up and do their part. The Multi-Faith Council is often one of the first organizations here in Toledo that's contacted after some horrific event maybe occurs in our community, whether it's a murder or something else. They are always there. They're always showing up to give words of hope and love. And it's so important. It is so important in our world. Um, I could repeat pretty much what everyone else has said. Um, the Universal Worship Services, I think we're always surprised that there are so many similarities in our religions and our beliefs and the way that we, we hope the world ideally would become or is and could become. Um, as Hazrat Anayat Khan started the worship, the worship service in 1921 and his hope was that, you know, we would raise ourselves above the distinctions and differences which divide us. And I think that Toledo Universal Worship Services really, really does that. It, that's awesome. And thank you to everyone in our community. And I encourage everyone out there that's listening and wants to get involved, please, please join us. Thank you. Lorraine, thanks, Lorraine. I appreciate your support more than I can say. Um, I'm just going to end this so that those of you who have been patiently uh, attending for almost two hours now um, have a chance to have a bit of a break before your next session. Um, I, I, I did want to just add the comment that it, since it's Interfaith Awareness Week, that I've been involved in interfaith work now, and it's such important work, especially now in, in our very divided country. Um, but I've been involved now for 20 years. It's a long time. And I've had the opportunity to watch how we've developed in interfaith consciousness um, since I began. And of course, it didn't begin 20 years ago. There are organizations in the US that started 30 and 40 years ago. Um, but when I started 
being involved in international work, um, there was a kind of mindset that there were certain rules you had to follow and that it was largely dialogue, um, talking heads, talking about what we share in common and talking about our individual traditions sometimes. Um, and everyone sort of agreed that, it, that we could fellowship together, we could learn together, um, but worship together? Oh no, we couldn't do that. And, and I think we've grown up um, and now 21 or 20 years later, um, we've proved that we can worship together and, and maintain our differences because that makes a richness um, that we, we have differences. We have different ways of expressing truth. Um, but, but worshiping together has a great communal power. And I think it may be the answer to peace. It's worshiping together, praying together. So thanks everybody for your contributions. And um, I hope you continue to enjoy the sessions during Interfaith Awareness Week and hope we meet again sometime. There's a parliament coming up in 2023. I'm gonna be there if I'm still breathing. So I hope to see some of you there and at, at Nain Connects. And, and if you visit Toledo, you're welcome. You can stay at my house. So um, thanks everybody. Um, have a great rest of your day and week. I would just like to say real quick before we sign off that for anybody from outside the Toledo area that's uh, found this interesting and valuable um, due to Crystal's fabulous technical skills. Uh, when we do the um, Universal Worship program, it's available on Facebook Live. And uh, so you can tune into that and participate along with us on a monthly basis from September until June. So anybody who's interested in that, look for us on Facebook Live. Yes, that's certainly true. And, and the services are recorded forever, I guess. So you can even watch some past ones. And this uh, program has been streamed to YouTube live. So um, along with all the other programs in this wonderful week, um, you and your friends can, can revisit. So have a great day and um, hope to see you again sometime. Bye-bye. Thank you, Judy.